Welcome back to This Week in Pennsylvania. Joined now by former state senators, Democrat Andrew Dinneman and Republican John Eichelberger. Thank you both for being with us, guys. You're now pushing for term limits in Congress. You're co-chairs of a group called U.S. Term Limits. Andrew, what is that? U.S. Term Limits is a national organization trying to get each state uh, to a based on article each state based on Article Five of the U.S. Constitution uh, to call uh, for a convention of the states to force Congress to act. And and term limits. So what kind of term limits are we talking in uh, in the House and Senate? Uh, yeah, absolutely, in the House and Senate. How we have four four terms, three terms. What is well, your... what the um, uh, it it is up to the convention to decide that. Uh, many of this, many believe it should be no more than three terms in the House and no more than two terms in the Senate. John, uh, critics are watching this, saying, "Hey, there already are term limits. They're called elections, and in the House, it's every two years, and in the Senate, it's every six years." Well, we know practically that doesn't work. In fact, I had a, a friend of mine, former House member in Pennsylvania talk about uh, the Pennsylvania legislature and how if you look at the statistics over the years, retirement, death, and imprisonment outrank defeat for uh, incumbents. Say so it's pretty hard to, for me. to Say that incumbent. one more time. Retirement, death, and imprisonment. Those are the three. They, they are, you're more likely to leave office by one of those three than you are by losing an election. Where are we in the process of this? So you're the Pennsylvania co-chairs. You're going to try to get, what has to happen, I guess? Do, Congress has to agree to limit themselves? Um, well, what happens is this, is uh, when two-thirds of the states, based on Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution, meets together for a convention, it then requests Congress to act. Uh, Congress um, uh, needs, has to act, but uh, this has happened before. For example, uh, the 17th Amendment allowed for the election of, uh, of senators. Before that, they were chosen by the state legislatures. Uh, what Congress will probably do is when enough states ask for the convention, they will act ahead of time and probably, unfortunately, uh, protect themselves as incumbents, and it would be for the future. Uh, but whatever, we need to move forward on this. John, what do we know about the popularity of, of the plan or the idea of, of limiting our, our, our U.S. congressmen and senators? It's very popular. Uh, across the board, around the United States, it's 82 percent of the public supports this. It's a little higher for Republicans, slightly lower for Democrats, and independents a little bit lower. They're in the upper 70s. But it's 82% across the board. So there, I, I don't, I'm not aware of any other issue right now that it would be 82% agreement uh, in, in do, moving forward with an issue. That's why uh, a lot of times what happens with constitutional amendments like this is once there's enough momentum and the states start to get closer to the two-thirds margin, the Congress will be forced to act because they know They'll either do it on their own or the, the, the uh, convention will have to be called by law. So they may go ahead and, and uh, uh, implement some term limits on themselves. Both of you gentlemen have won elections at the state level, a couple of elections at the state level. Why not do this at the state level as well? I, I, as far as I'm concerned, it's a good idea, but the, uh, but the focus here is on congressional level, and uh, uh, I think the state should have a constitutional convention, uh, and I know Senator Eichelberger, former Senator Eichelberger, agrees with that, uh, so that we could discuss many issues, including term limits. Uh, but what we're focusing on now is because of the chaos in Congress, uh, because uh, most people have lost confidence in government, we're focusing on trying to get term limits on the national level. Okay, I want e each of you quickly, though, for 15 seconds, a, a, a map, a redistricting map, which happens every 10 years. The first map was introduced this week, or at least it's out there, at least to start the process. Are you guys confident this, this, it'll be different this time and it's not going to be a, a backroom deal that gets done? John, you start with you. I, I'm not confident. I think it's always a backroom deal. Um, I, I, I've heard pros and cons on the current map. Uh, people in our area I don't think like it very well. It splits up Blair County, from what I'm told. I haven't seen it, but, uh, you know, I think there'll be a lot of changes to it. And, and in the end, it'll be the power brokers that make the decision. Andy, do you agree with that? You're a Democrat. He's a Republican. You're a Democrat. You agree with what he just said? 
Uh, unfortunately, he's probably correct, but hope springs eternal, <laughs> even in Pennsylvania. It does. <laughs> hey, both of you, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, have, a, have a great day. We certainly do appreciate it. Uh, stay with Thank us. You. Much more this week in Pennsylvania when we come right back.